us sing this morning, O Lord, you're beautiful. For truly our Lord is beautiful. He is the light. And we want to shine his light. That's our goal. We want him to replace the lamp of our first love and burn within us. We want to sing his praises. So worship with us now as we sing, O Lord, you're beautiful. Greetings to all the Nagaland Bible College students and faculty and friends that have joined in to our online chapel service this morning. It's an honor to be with you, and I want to share with you the thought from 1 John chapter 1, 7, which says, If we walk in the light as He is in the light, we have fellowship one with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, His Son, cleanses us from all sin. I want to talk to you this morning about walking in the light. We know that the source of light is Jesus. He's the light of the world. And when he went back to heaven, he said, now ye are the light of the world. And we are to walk in his light and we're to share the light, the light of the glorious gospel that others may know him in the free pardon of sin. Jesus being the source, we see that John shared in this little book of 1 John, about the fellowship that we have when we walk in the light. This is called the fellowship epistle. And John said, our eyes have seen him, our ears have heard him, we have touched, we have handled him. That's the incarnation. And he wanted people to know about Jesus, the light. Because at that time, the Gnostics were teaching that everything was material and that Jesus didn't come in the flesh. And he was proving he did come in the flesh. He manifested himself. He was crucified. We often know John 3.16, but I don't know if you know John. 1 John 3.16 It's very similar. It tells us that whereby perceive we the love of God because he laid down his life for us and we ought to lay down our lives for the brethren. So John was teaching in this little fellowship epistle that Jesus is the source of the light and he came and he brought light to the world. Now, for us to be in fellowship with the Lord, we must walk in the light. He gave that little word, if, if we walk in the light. That means when we come to know the Lord Jesus in the free pardon of sin, it's not a free pass that we can live in sin. We must walk in the light. And as the Holy Spirit illuminates to our mind, makes the light bulb go off, something that we're doing that we shouldn't be doing, we must correct that. 1 John 1, 8 says, if we say we have no sin, we, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. And then in the next verse, verse 9, there's the little word again, if. 
If we confess our sins, he is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. So we must walk in the light. We must recognize our sin. We must confess our sin. So there's some requirements for staying in fellowship with God. Sin separates us. But as we confess our sins and we aim to keep his commandments, he says in chapter 2, you can read it later, but verses 3 through 8, he gives us the test of the true knowledge. That is, have we left our first love or are we walking in the light? Are we abiding in him? He says we must keep ourselves unspotted from the world. In the very last verse of 1 John, chapter 5, verse 21, he says, keep yourself from idols, anything that comes between you and the Lord. When he wrote this, he said, Little children, I'm writing to you because your sins are forgiven. Young men, I'm writing to you because you are strong and you have overcome the wicked one. And he said, Fathers, I'm writing to you because you have known the Lord from the beginning and he abides in you and you can overcome the wicked one. So I say to you, Nagaland Bible College students, to you young men and young women, you are strong. You can overcome the wicked one. And we'll, I'll share a little bit more about that in just a minute. But he tells us we must continue to abide in Christ, keep ourselves unspotted from the world, and we must minister to those in need. He said, if we see our brother in need and we shut up our bowels of compassion towards them, how does the love of God dwell in us? So there are some requirements to staying in fellowship with the Lord, having the sin out of our lives, having the love of God within us, not living in sin, but being strong and being victorious. Are you able to overcome the world? Of course, we know you are in Christ. The Bible says, whosoever is born of God overcometh the world. And this is the victory that overcomes the world, even our faith. And who is he that overcomes the world? He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. When John wrote this little epistle, 35 times in it he says the word know. You may know. You can have knowledge, knowledge of eternal life. Now, let me give you a test. Many of you, you just came through your midterm exams, but here's a little test. I'll give you an easy one. Uh, it's a test of the fellowship. The first thing you must ask yourself, do I dwell in sin? Sin will keep you from God. But the good news is God will keep you from sin. But if you're dwelling in sin, then you're out of fellowship with God. Uh, 1 John 3, 6 says, Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not. Whosoever sinneth, sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. This verse gives a lot of people problems because they say, Well, I know I'm a Christian, but I, but I sinned. Well, a better translation or way to say that is we don't keep on sinning. We're not sinless in that we're perfect, but we do sin less. When the light comes on that this is something we shouldn't be doing, then we have to deal with it and say, Lord, take the sin out of my life. Now he gives another test if you're in the fellowship. In 1 John 4.20, he says, If a man say, I love God and hates his brother, he's a liar. For he that loveth not his brother whom he hath seen, how can he love God whom he hath not seen? So I ask you, do you hate your brother? If you hate anyone, if anyone came to your mind when I said that, then you may have some uh, feelings of resentment you need to, to deal with because we must have love. If we don't forgive others, we will not be forgiven. And then do you help your brother? If you see your brother in need and you shut up your bowels of compassion, how does the love of Christ dwell in you? Are you willing to reach out and help others? And then, are you able to overcome the world? As I told you, it's the faith. It's, that's the victory that we have. If we can overcome temptation, if we can overcome sin. Another uh, test is, are you plagued with constant fear? 1 John 4.18 says, There is no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear, because fear hath torment. He that uh, feareth is not made perfect in love. So we don't have to fear. We don't walk in fear. We don't walk uh, in hatred. We don't walk in defeat. We walk in victory. We walk in faith. We overcome the temptations of this life. And I'm sharing these things with you because I want you to walk in the light. I want you to have that joy. 
John said, I have written these things that ye may know that you have eternal life, but I've written these things to you that your joy may be full. It's a blessed life serving the Lord. And as you study your, in your classes and you're learning your Bible knowledge, it will help you so much. It will help you to walk in the light. Of course, you have to get in God's Word to know the light, the light source. But there's many enemies that are coming against you in your studies. And there's many enemies that are coming against you in your life. Uh, John talked about the Antichrist, that spirit uh, in chapter 2, verse 22, the Antichrist, how he comes to seduce. Who is a liar but he that denieth that Jesus is the Christ? He is Antichrist. He's against Christ that denieth the Father and his Son. And then he said that these things I have written unto you concerning them that seduce you. And he warned in chapter 4, verses 1 through 3, Try the spirits. God is not in every wind that is blowing. So we have to be careful for the evil systems of the world, the evil seducers of the world, and the evil spirits of the world. The world is full of teachings of humanism, atheism, naturalism, all these war against our mind. So we must be in the Word so we will know how to overcome the world. 1 John 2, 15 says, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. For all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life, is not of the Father, but it's of the world. And the world passeth away, and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. And what a promise that is. You see, there are great promises in serving and following the Lord. 1 John 2, 25 says, This is the promise that he hath promised us, even eternal life. And then in verse 28, he says, And now, little children, abide in him. We are constantly abiding in him, that when he shall appear, we may have confidence and not be ashamed before him at his coming. He's coming. And we don't have to fear. Matter of fact, we have confidence in the judgment. We look forward to meeting him in the air because we know our sins are under the blood. Chapter 4, verse 17 says, Herein is our love made perfect, that we may have boldness in the day of judgment, because as He is, so are we in this world. We can have boldness in our service. There's no fear in love. But perfect love casteth out fear. So we have the great promise. He's coming. We have eternal life. And we will have confidence when we see Him in the rapture. We will have confidence in the judgment, boldness to serve Him in this life. And another great promise is when He comes, if we are in the fellowship, chapter 3, verse 2 says, Behold, now are we the sons of God. And it does not yet appear what we shall be, but we know that when He shall appear, we shall be like Him. For we shall see Him as He is. And every man that hath this hope in Him purifieth himself even as He is pure. So you see, we have confidence in Him. He is pure. He has put His righteousness upon us. And one day when He comes, He will give us a new body. So what is our purpose? Our purpose in life is to know Him and to make Him known. To love Him and to love His people. The world is watching our actions. And there's also a witness that is watching to see if we're in the fellowship. First John 5, uh, verse 7 says, And there are three that bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, which is Jesus, the living Word, and the Holy Ghost. And these three are one. That's the Trinity. And then in verse 8 he says uh, about the witness on earth. There are three that bear witness in earth, the Spirit, the water, and the blood. And these three agree in one. So, the water and the blood, this is the water of Jesus' baptism and the blood of His atoning death. And the Spirit gives assurance that the biblical message about Jesus is true. And how wonderful it is to walk in the light. Stepping in the light, how beautiful to walk in the steps of the Savior. Stepping in the light. If we walk in that light, we have fellowship. So today... I just wanted to share these thoughts with you as you are studying God's Word, that you will continue to walk in the light, the light of God's Word. It is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. A lamp shows us where we are now, it guides us to our next step, and it keeps us from falling. So let's do all we can to continue to be in fellowship 
Check your heart today. Make sure you are in the fellowship. If you have any sin in your life, confess that. Ask the Lord to help you to overcome. If there's any hatred there that shouldn't be there, ask the Lord. Take this out. If there's any fear, God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power and love and a sound mind. There's great promises, not only in this life, but the life to come in following the Lord. The Lord is watching. He wants us to be victorious and he will help us in all we do and now I'd like to close with saying a word of prayer for you so let's all pray together and pray and ask the Lord to give you more light at different times God is showing you many different things but we can't be rebellious we have to say Lord my heart is open I will walk in the light as you show me the next step the next step and I believe you will guide my path will you ask the Lord to do that right now to help you to continue to walk in the light. Let us pray. Oh, precious Heavenly Father, how wonderful is your word. We thank you for John, the beloved apostle, that gave us such a, a wonderful testimony that we may know you. Jesus, you said, blessed are the eyes that, uh, the ones that, have seen you that believe but the ones that have not seen you and yet they believed how blessed we are and that's us Lord we haven't seen you in the flesh but we are striving to seek your light always to follow after you and help us Lord that we may walk in your light give us more light Holy Spirit I pray as the students study that you will illuminate their minds and you will help them Lord deal with anything that is in their life that shouldn't be and Lord so that they can receive all the promises that you have Lord help us all to take this little word if and to to deal with it Lord to know that we must continually be in a process of growing in grace and knowledge and I pray for all the students bless them bless their teachers Lord because they are strong they the young men they are strong the young women they will overcome through your help and I pray for the teachers they've known you they've served you they've been faithful may they be able to impart to the students the knowledge they need Lord to overcome every victory to overcome every problem and have the victory Lord I pray and you promised us in your word that the victory that we have comes from Jesus it's even our faith and so our faith is in you we dedicate this time and this message to you Lord and I pray that it will be used for your intended use, it will not return void. You will bring it back to their minds, and you will preach it and re-preach it in their ears, Lord. For I ask this in the name of Jesus and for his sake. Amen. Thank you for this time that we've had together. God bless you. I will be praying for you. Remember me in your prayers, and may the Lord's favor be upon you. God bless you.